But folks, do please say hello to our guest this evening, Niall Fraser. Hello everyone, I hope you're all well. Hello, thanks for having me as well, Alistair. I love all these old pictures of Glasgow you bring up, they're absolutely stunning. Especially picking out that old hand cart as well, just Aye. absolutely stunning. It's, it's funny the wee things that are linking it all together, it's beautiful. Yes, yes. Well, that's one of the wonders of the internet is being able to find all these photographs, which for for many years you you could only find if you maybe went into a library or something like that. Oh, but sure. the the digitization of uh, lots of these archives now is just a, a, a wonderful thing, absolutely wonderful. We're we're living in an age where we've never had so much information and yeah. so much knowledge, and yet people seem often not always to be taken advantage of that information and knowledge. Niall, I thought by way of introducing your um, chat tonight, mm -hmm. we'd play your latest video. Yeah, I think that's probably a good way to start, eh? Aye. Aye. Aye, it's a two minute video. And so we'll just, uh, we'll play that just now and then we'll talk about what you're t talking about and referencing in the mm -hmm. video. Okay, cool. Perfect. Scotland is at the crossroads, ladies and gentlemen, and it saddens me deeply that we've ended up here. But in the same vein, hope never dies. I'm here in Roslyn because we are on the precipice. We've only got two options now, Scotland. On one hand, we've been offered a future, a future where the state controls more and more of your life, where we're segregated into 20-minute ghettos, when even your diet is dictated by the authorities. Men and women will become some freakish rainbow amalgamation Families will be a thing of the past. Free speech will be snuffed out. Where every movement you make is tracked and logged by the surveillance state. Every call you make is screened and listened to. A future where your privacy is spat on. Life in the digital cage. The digital hamster wheel. This future is what is being imposed on you by those in Holyrood. Whether you like it or not. The illusion of choice between Labour, Tories, SNP, the Lib Dems, the Greens. That's all there is. An illusion. These parties and politicians are all part of the same corrupt political human centipede that gives us all the scripted huffing and hawing at Holyrood where they all march together in unison. Our politicians don't care about us, ladies and gentlemen. That much is obvious. And on the other hand, a golden age is awaiting us. We only require the bravery to grab it. The bravery to tell the human centipede we're not playing anymore. Not one more vote should go to these parties. Trust in us, Scotland, and we will lead us out this darkness. We will return discipline to the schools. We will eliminate the trans ideology. Day one, we'll make every transaction in Holyrood transparent and public. We'll open the books and we're going to keep them open. We're going to rebuild Scotland and we're going to rebuild our traditions. And we're going to do it all under the glorious banner of family. You know, the future can be as bright as we want it to be. The only limit is our collective imagination. So Scotland, what way are we going? What road are we taking? The one that leads us directly in a digital captivity, confusion and chaos, or the one that leads us to our own liberation. The road that destroys, or the road that creates. The only thing that we need for you, Scotland, is the bravery to wave goodbye to the human centipede. The bravery to vote the other way. To put your belief and faith in us, the Scottish Family Party, because we will not fail you. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot, to, a lot to unpack in that one. <laughs> <laughs> very passionate, I have to say, a very okay. passionate um, presentation, and I like the way that you initially had us uh, depressed, feeling yes. there was no way out, and then you came back in there with there is a golden age awaiting us. It's so frustrating, though, Alistair, isn't it? You can feel it. It's just, it's just slipping out with our grasp. You can feel this golden age as much as I can. Mm, yes, yes, yes. And um, and then at the end, you gave the, a plug for the Scottish Family Party, which we can mm. maybe talk about uh, in a few moments. But um, do you really think that things are... I mean, you used the phrase there, illusion of choice. And I know what you mean by that. And which is that something that you would s stand by? Do you, do you really think, um, you know, there's really nothing there? I, I would certainly stand by it in, in large swathes of the Scottish government, especially uh, the SNP, Labour, the Lib Dems and the Greens. Uh, having so many overlapping policies uh, and, and so many things that they, they all vote together on, uh, that it does seem to be one 
blob rather and you, you, i mean you can um you can sort of uh, insult the Tories as much as you want, but they seems to be the only ones that's voting against um, the, the wacky policies coming into Holyrood at the moment. Um, but I, I totally stand by the fact that, I mean, these parties are all working almost in unison uh, and patting themselves on the back whilst they do it. Um, I, I mean, I just had to make the speech because I feel that I, I have to capture the feeling that a lot of us have about the establishment and the predicament that, we sort of find ourselves in Scotland and both the UK time and time again voting for the lesser of two evils, you know? Yes, 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 absolutely. Um, in fact, I was just reading an article today by Alan Cochran and he's talking about Holyrood and it just happened to be here on my desk and he's saying about the SNP and the other parties have appeared only too happy not to rock the boat and instead to accept their sinecures and salaries at Holyrood. Yeah, I, I could, cannot yeah. agree with that more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's there is that feeling. There's also there's also a feeling that <clears throat> um, no matter who you vote for, nothing is really going to change on the major issues as well. And that's that's a, a real worry, especially at the British level. Yes, um, because. And I'm not being party political about this one way or the other, but there is a feeling that the Tories haven't really done very much to to address some of the big issues, uh, the big national macro issues, um, such as bringing forward Brexit, uh, getting the benefits of Brexit, yes, um, keeping the union together, fighting back strongly. The, only in the recent past, only in the last six months, have they started to fight back against the SNP. Yeah. But prior to that it was just let the SNP do what they want and will not fight back because it's it's too much danger mm -hmm. too much bother as well and of course on the immigration issue which in fact they've the the Tories have only increased it yeah. they haven't decreased it so there's these absolute frustrations there um people will still go to the polls though and they'll they'll vote because we we tend to vote for a lesser of two evils don't you go along with that thinking uh, people will go, I mean, and this is why I put in the bit in the speech about having the bravery to vote the other way almost. That's that's all that we require, Alistair, is, uh, is the bravery to vote the other way, is to say, no, I won't be voting with the established parties, Labour, SNP, Lib Dems, Tories, whatever it is, whatever it may be. Um, I'm going to go with some of the smaller parties because we know for certain that... Uh, these parties are, at least to a degree, way less corrupt uh, than the ones that are established. Um, and it's all about trying to come together behind one banner in order to defeat this uh, this attitude that you're talking about. Nothing seems to be getting done. Our tires seem to be spinning in the mud, Alistair, but nothing seems to be getting done. Uh, immigrants are still arriving on boats. Um, like you were talking about earlier, um, the, the UK's branding uh, on their payments and stuff like that. We, we need to get everything sorted. There's so many things that we, we need to fix imminently. Uh, but then again, we just seem like we're going nowhere. Uh, mm. It's really quite an annoying feeling. And yeah. the impositions, you know, these, um, just an example, I mean, this US that came into Glasgow just recently, these impositions just keep coming. Uh, I mean, the slow totalitarian tiptoe just moves onward uncontested. I mean, do we have any opposition in Holyrood? This is what, why I'm having to do what I'm having to do. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that that that's good. And you mentioned the Eulers thing. Um, there's no opposition, for example, to this the to the, the to the uh, climate to the car the anti-carbon agenda. There's no opposition to that because everybody has signed up to believe that it's a real thing, and that you know there's so. Every policy that's derived from that philosophy, you know, yeah. all the parties promote the same, the same policies, just to a greater or lesser extent. So that's that's like another thing where there's no proper division. There's no um, the idea of a two-party system is one party believes all that stuff and the other party believes everything differently, yeah. and you can choose which side you stand on. But when all the when the parties are just meshing in in that way. Tessellating. 
Yes, yeah. you've hit the nail on the head. Tessellating, what a word that is. <laughs> what an incredible word. Your vocabulary knows no bounds. Tessellating, you've heard it here on the Force for Good podcast. Tessellating, get that in the notebook. Uh, I mean, I just, I, this, this you, Les, I mean, this is the kind of policy that it's just, it's almost suddenly happened upon people, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. People are having to replace and upgrade cars or face constant fines. Uh, you know, a policy that's totally devoid of any public consultation. It just happens upon people. I've seen that uh, our good friend David Close, a friend of the show, is leading a protest in Glasgow against this very topic oh. over the weekend. I mean, for me, it's digital segregation enforced by fines, the same way how mm-hmm. COVID was enforced. COVID, there wasn't that many bobbies on the street arresting people at beaches. It was all enforced via fines hitting people where it hurts the most at the po- in the pocket at the worst possible time, a cost of living or a cost of lockdown crisis. So, uh, yes, yes. It feels like the um, Scott Gov's almost abusing its citizenry uh, uh, to the fullest extent. Right, yeah. Now that helps to explain what you, what you uh, what were talking about there in the first half of your video. And when you talk about the golden age there, are you thinking about? Is there any sort of uh, what? What? What are you envisaging with so that? With uh, I, I, I had to put the golden age in it because really we can do anything we want to do, right? Um, uh, an idea that I've got is to rebuild traditional structures um, using traditional building materials and sort of try to rebuild uh, our traditions and make home ownership almost 100% home ownership across the land. Um, but obviously we need to be using traditional materials and stuff like that as well. And that will go a lot in terms of cutting off the skill shortages that we've got the now. We've got a lot of kids growing up these days without a trade, without any real uh, tangible skills. So a lot of digital skills, yes. Uh, but, um, you know, did we want to keep the craftsman skills uh, available. We, wa- we we can't allow this to die out. So we need to sort of revitalise these core values and sco- core skills and, and make um, Scotland a place, fan- you know, it's so great that everyone wants to come here. Uh, mm. And yet we're, we're being disused uh, almost as well. We've got so many national resources, so many things going for us, but we just don't use it to our advantage. It really. Mm. Well, a, a lot of that as well is is due <clears throat> due to bad philosophy from the Greens and the SNP and so on. That, for example, they don't want to take all our all our carbon resources. Um, they don't want to even touch them. They want, and it's similarly with the Labour Party now, they're saying they're not going to do any more drilling for oil. Or anything like that. Well, I mean, straight away that's impoverishing people. Straight yeah. away that's going to make um, the cost of living greater. And um, there's a big attack now on farming, and it's it's only really just starting in the UK. But it's Ireland, the Republic of Ireland. I was reading uh, last week that they're they're wanting to slaughter a huge amount of the cattle herd uh, for for what you know yes. for a presumed the emissions, whether from the cows or on the materials that are required to continue to keep the cows um, going and the fertiliser and all that kind of stuff. But, I mean, all that's going to do is price literal meat, which is yeah. the best food you can get. It's going to make it too expensive for most people. Um, and so it's almost like our politicians are against us. You know, I, I don't... <laughs> almost. <laughs> yeah, it, is. it is almost. Uh, mm. Carry on what you're saying, so I don't know. No, no, you know, you're right. Um, that's that's really what I, I was saying. I, I say almost because I don't always like to be too definite about that. Because mm-hmm. that's that. If that were the case, then we're all in greater trouble than we thought we were in. Yes. <laughs> but we might, and we might be there. Mm-hmm. We might be there. There, there is certainly like evil people around and at the top of various organizations who do who are working to a plan and um, and there is a certain level of of um that that one has to be conscious of mm-hmm. um consciously directed evil you know and that's really come out as well quite strongly in the last few years 
started to really notice that as the powers of control over people have have developed especially through digital yeah. mechanisms and smartphones and so on and just seeing the power uh, and let's hope that our politicians will use that power for good but we've always got to be conscious that there will be people who use it for bad there always has been there always will be we've got to protect ourselves from that so in that sense i mean your organization the scottish family party they're conscious of those sorts of things and they're they're trying to protect people um is there anything you want to talk because you mentioned the scottish family party there at the last part of yeah, your, yeah, of your video uh, every time I mention them, I get caught up. Everybody's like, uh, yeah, there's another Scottish family party political broadcast, as if uh, no other political party is allowed to recruit. Only Labour is allowed to recruit. Only the Tories, only the Lib Dems. As if these smaller parties are not allowed a voice. <laughs> We're not allowed to recruit because you'll be vote split. No, I'm, I'm not falling for that trap again. Not a chance. Uh, guys, please do join the Scottish family party. It's just, uh, as a first line of defence... I mean, we plan on fielding candidates in every constituency uh, for the Westminster elections coming with the Hamilton and Rutherglen by-election likely coming up imminently that I, I should be running against uh, Margaret Ferrier if she does decide to run. But, I mean, the plan is um, to upset the apple cart as much as possible, especially with these other parties. You know, as I've been described in this speech, they all seem very connected, almost like a human centipede. It's time... It really is time to start thinking differently here in Scotland, especially when it comes to political parties. I mean, I don't want my vote going to someone I don't trust and that I don't trust will do the right thing and it will not stand up for the constituents. And in fact, a lot of the time, their constituents are getting sold in the river. So we want to be different with the SFP. We've got a few cutting edge, completely new policies to tickle the curiosity of the Scottish electorate. But at the same time, we are promising stability good governance, open and transparent exchanges. Uh, and it's, you know, for once in a lifetime, let's just do it. You know, let's just vote the other way just once to see if we can get a result. Uh, I mean, we can't, even, well, who's it? Einstein and definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. Well, we're never going to get a different result unless we start voting differently, guys. Mm. Well, um, Chris Christopher says the SFP is a true voice of reason and decency, both much needed qualities in Scotland. Thanks very much for that, Christopher. I've seen a lot of great comments coming in. Uh, Derek Hart, Christopher Glenn, Stuart MacDonald, Catherine Rainey. Great, great comments. Thanks. Good, good. Um, just before we continue, I'm going to ask the question for our viewers um, about... Um, on this day in British history, and the prize is this little badge here. So, please send in your answers to contact at aforceforgood.uk, and you'll get this, and you'll also get a copy of our latest issue of Union Heart. And the question is, on this day, 31st of May, 1916, the biggest naval battle of World War I was fought what was the name of that naval battle? Send your answer to contact at aforceforgood.uk and we'll announce the winner at the top of the hour. Great stuff. So, yeah, back to the Scottish Family Party. There's a by-election, um, a, a local election coming up um, <clears throat> two Thursdays away, I think. It's uh, just the Bells Hill by-election. Uh, it's Bells Hill, that's the one. Are you standing at that? No, so I, th I think we'll be fielding a candidate in that one. I think that's just about with my boundary. Uh, I've said before, I don't know why I work in the, the SMP run councils, <laughs> especially when uh, Jordan Linden, there was a huge big protection ring thrown up around him, especially when he got exposed. Uh, it's just outrageous what happens in these councils. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't think I'd be able to contain myself, Alistair. <laughs> 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 uh, well, we need to get you into some kind of legislature. I think that's mm. that's that's important so that you've got an outlet for for your passion and for your ideas. And um, and Bells Hill is that North Lanarkshire. That's North Lanarkshire. Yes. Yeah. Well, there is a a candidate. There is a um, a councillor who represents the British Unionist yeah. Party. He had a great um, election, and nobody's seen him winning. But he, he won by a landslide almost. Yes. So, uh, yes. One by mile. Yes. Incredible. Um, 
and uh, the British Unionist Party is like very much uh, everything that that we a force for good agree with anyway. Mm -hmm. And he, what he got elected because um, well he was a well known local character and his constituency was very much that way. His council constituency is very much that um, mm -hmm. traditional British Unionist. So I think that's fantastic that he's at least there. So you do you do occasionally get get uh, good folk that yes. go in and to to these councils. No question about it. But it's hard work, I should imagine, um, um, having to deal with with the the opposition and that kind of thing. The chap ran a fantastic campaign. Um, I remember. Uh, it was almost the offer unity days that he won that. Um, but I, nobody had him doing his even close to winning. Uh, no. But I smashed it at the park. Well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking about local councils, one of the things that Gordon Brown wants to do here is to investigate mm. m uh, more mayors for Scottish towns and cities. Like you know, he's got his 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 his, uh, his English mayors in these metropolitan cities. He wants to extend mayoral ships. But I don't really understand. Do you, do you no. understand what's meant? Why? What's the big thing about having a mayor? I, I'm not quite sure. I, I mean, I don't think it's really got the same uh, feeling as it does in England. Uh, where, whereas a lot of your um, uh, like council areas are very rural and spread out. You know, a, a mayor doesn't make sense, really. I can mm. understand Edinburgh and Glasgow, maybe Aberdeen, stuff like that. But I, I don't think you would need to put mayors in Fife or Stirling or Falkirk or anything any like that, or Highland. doesn't make sense to me. Uh, but I, I see what he's... Uh, anything that takes power away from Holyrood and decentralises Holyrood is great. But again, I don't trust Gordon Brown and his schemes. No. Uh, for for uh, he, He's mucked it up so many times before. No. Um, something that we've always been strong at, strong on, is if you devolve power to the the local councils in Scotland, then rather than have them answerable to Holyrood, they should be answerable to say Westminster. Yes. So you so you've got like a three way balance of power, mm -hmm. because if the if you're devolving from Holyrood to the council, then basically Holyrood is still in control. Yes. Of the council. Is in control of everything that that's going on, in control of ultimately of all those powers. So, if you actually say no, it's British power we're going to give to the local council, mm -hmm. then that bypasses Holyrood, and it means that the council is responsible to both, to both, uh, to both parts. So it's like a three-way, a triangle, three-way balance of power, um, rather than just have rather than just devolve everything to Holyrood and then say you then devolve it mm -hmm. downwards. That's that's just really giving more power to yeah. to whoever is running Holyrood. Stephen Beer's got a good comment. Is the trough deep enough for mayors to dig in as well? I mean, this is uh, so very true what you're saying. We've already got an overabundance of politicians in Scotland. Mm. I mean, you oh, yeah. look at Manchester, was Arnie, uh, Andy Burnham, and he's just the mayor. Uh, whereas we've got a bit of population here some of these cities, uh, and we've got, you know, 50, 60, 100 MSPs, <laughs> and we still kind of get anything right. So you're yes. right, Stephen, uh, I think we need an extension to the trough. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we need to get another couple of metres. Yes, exactly, exactly. Well, um, what does this button do? It says, at least Brown supports the UK. Well, that's that's right, and that's yeah, uh, at least one, one thing that he's got going for him, but I don't want his support of the UK to... You know, muck let's hope they to it, muck it up. Yeah, yeah, he's he's in danger of mucking things up. But who knows? It's it's still got to get past Keir Starmer, and he's Keir Starmer's still got to get elected in the first place. So who knows what will happen? However, I'm writing a, a an article which will summarise all of this, and that should be um, online either tomorrow or on Friday, um, so that people understand exactly what is being planned because this is it's really quite big. You know, well, if it was, it was 79 pages worth. Uh, 155, 155 oh, wow. pages. It's weighty. Yes. It's, it's a weighty tome, very much a weighty tome. It's um, it's almost five to eight, so we're going to call this to an end. Niall, thanks very much for giving, for expanding upon that two-minute video. 
in no, the way that, awesome. in the in the way that you did. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and thanks, uh, thanks very much for coming your, on. Um, your great commenters and your great listeners. So thanks very very much for having me on. And uh, once again, I hope to come back again. Well, you'll be very welcome, and we'll get our assistant producer to contact you about coming back on in the not too distant future. Perfect. And um, telling us more about your political career, which hopefully okay. will go well. <laughs> right. Take care, my friend. Thank you. Okay. Now. Good night.